PID is one of the most useful algorithms when it comes to driving an output in a controlled manner. It works in a closed loop environment where a controller device controls the output based on the feedback provided by an input device connected to it. So any variation in the output will be calculated and adjusted to maintain a certain threshold set by the user. The mathematical derivation of the algorithm looks like this. It may look complicated at first, but once you understand how this works, implementing it gets much easier. PID controller stands for proportional integral and derivative controller. And its main purpose is to optimize the error. There is a set point which is basically the threshold limit and the actual value measured by the input device. The difference between these two is the error that we have to minimize. To do that, we first calculate the P, I and D terms. And the sum of these three will be our desired output. Let's start with proportional control. The proportional term is calculated by multiplying the error value with a constant value KP. Here I made a basic setup to demonstrate how PID algorithm works and how to tune it. I am using a 12 volt PTC heater as the output device and DS18B20 temperature sensor to read the temperature. The heater is driven by a N channel MOSFET connected to a node MCU board. The values will be sent to a blink app and I will use the Arduino plotter to visualize the graph. This video is sponsored by PCBWay.com. They are one of the finest PCB manufacturer from China. Besides PCB manufacturing, they also provide PCB assembly service. So upload your Gerber files to get 10 pieces, high quality, professionally made, custom PCBs for your next project for just only $5. When we first start the system, the error value is pretty big, and we need to quickly get to the set temperature. Therefore, we increase the constant, KP, which reduces the time it takes to reach that limit. At some point, you will see the PID value gets bigger than 255, which we don't want. So we need to constrain the PID value within 0 to 255. Now, as the error gets smaller and smaller, the PWM value also decreases, and so does the rate of temperature rise. So, to increase the rate, we introduce the integral term. It accounts for past error values, and integrates them over time, to produce the I term. But, if we count the error values from the beginning, it will get too large after some time, so we need to set a limit, when we want to count the I term, and constrain its value. We want the I term to be calculated, when the error is too small. The D term is used to predict future trends of the error. It is mainly useful in case of certain changes in the system. The D term counts the rate of change over time. If it suddenly increases or decreases, the D term will dampen the effect. Now, the D term is not necessary for most of the time. And you could just use PI controller depending on the application. Also, as all three parameters are connected, so by changing one variable, you may need to adjust other two. Keep that in mind. Up until this point, we have a fixed value for the set point. But, what if, that is not the case? What if your system requires, to have multiple set points? This SMD reflow profile for instance. As you can see, the graph is not linear, meaning it doesn't have a fixed temperature value, at all the time. So, how do we apply PID algorithm here? Well, if you change the set point value, immediately after it crosses one stage, by nature the PID value will max out to reach to that temperature as quickly as possible. And, we don't want that. Instead, we want it to be rising slowly, following the graph. To do that, we need to determine the temperature values at any given time. And change the set point accordingly. Therefore, the set point will no longer be a constant and will follow the graph path. For that, you need to know two things. One, is the highest temperature at any stage. And the second one is the time it takes to reach the temperature. Let's take this graph for example. Here the temperature rises to 70 degrees in 60 seconds. Then it stays to 70 degrees for 50 seconds. Then it rises another 20 degrees in 40 seconds. Stay there for 30 seconds. So essentially there are four stages here. We measure the difference between high and low temperature at any stage. And divide that by the time it requires to reach there. And we add that incremental value, with the set point. Thus we get the variable set point. Now let's upload the code, and see the final result. As you can see, now we have an incremental set point, and the PID value is changing, according to the variation, in the set point. Therefore the actual temperature is following the set point path. And that's how we can incorporate the PID algorithm with a variable set point.
Thanks for watching. In the next video, I will make a PID controlled reflow hot plate using this technique. So, stay tuned for that.